Today I'm going to be going over how to wrinkle coat your valve cover correctly. Now this is one that's been done before and it hasn't been done very well. Most people will make a few mistakes as they try and do it and they'll end up with results like this where you have little areas where the wrinkle is nice but if you go up here you can see that it's raised and it's not even or if you come around to the side you'll see that it's very flat. The other issue people have is that it will flake off very early in the life cycle of the paint which doesn't need to happen and the reason that happens is because the preparation and the painting aren't done properly so I'll go through the proper process to get a really nice even wrinkle and to make it last a while. So this is the stuff that you're going to need. That sounds very bad. <laughs> Strip for me, baby. So we're going to start by stripping the cover so that we have a fresh surface to work with. When using paint stripper, it really helps to get a fresh tin. You want something with a diethyl ether as the active ingredient, and this evaporates once the tin has been opened for a long time. We really struggled to strip the cover until we bought a new tin and then the paint came off easily. The other thing to remember is to scrape the paint off while the stripper is still wet. If you let the stripper dry, you'll need to apply the stripper again. And if anything is really stubborn, a wire wheel or sandpaper will help. If you have any questions, it always helps to have the foreman on standby. I was gonna say, you can put the music back on if you want, because we're just talking shit. Looking good, man. Just agitate it with the brush a little bit more. Once the surface has been cleaned, a quick rinse with hydrochloric acid will etch the surface and really help the primer stick. When the cover is completely dry, cover any surfaces that you don't want paint on, such as gasket surfaces and anywhere exposed to a bolt. A sharp knife will make your life a lot easier if you need to cut any tape. Blunt knives or old knives tend to catch on the sticky residue of the tape and pull the tape off as you work. We used blue tack and washers to cover all the bolt holes. By making sure that there is no paint on the bolt holes, you won't chip the paint by accident when tightening the cover down.
Applying primer is as easy as following the directions on the tin. A few light coats, a few minutes apart, until you've built up an even base. I use a heat gun and an IR thermometer to make sure I don't overheat the paint. Using the heat gun until the paint no longer looks wet will make life a lot easier on a cold day. A lot of people skip the primer, but using primer will give you a few more years before the paint starts to flake, and it makes a huge difference to the quality of the final finish. Once the primer has been done, it is ready for the wrinkle coat. Step one is to apply a few very light coats until you have a single even finish. This coat should be too thin for the paint to wrinkle, but that isn't the point of this coat, it's just to help it stick to the primer. After that, you'll apply single, thick, even coats, but not so thick that it drips. Once a coat is applied, use a heat gun to get the paint up to 80 degrees until the surface takes on a matte finish. Wait at least 30 minutes until the wrinkles have formed before doing your next coat. Each coat will be the same process, however, you will focus a little bit more paint on areas that are flatter. Yeah. 
See, there's a little run of just that, ain't it? Oh, yeah. All right. As you build up the layers, the wrinkles will form evenly over the whole cover. You'll find that it uses a lot more paint to get an even wrinkle finish than you would originally expect. I've often used two tins because I keep going until I get that even result that I want. Once the paint is touch dry, you can remove any tape and other protection. Up. Cool man. I hope you put that back on there so we can see what we're doing and we'll yeah. pack her up. Yeah. 